Why? What did he do? No. I don't even look at him anymore. Did he do something ugly? He said something about me? vertical they can be horizontal all right this is where it gets kind of confusing so stay with me all right let's talk first what comes first on here vertical <laughs> now today i'm gonna get a stretchy graph that takes this on y'all ever played with silly putty before okay so I think about the graph being on like silly putty. So if I do a vertical stretch, okay, that means like if I pulled on the y axis and I just stretched it out. In terms of like a quadratic or an absolute value, what is happening to that graph as you stretch it this way? It's getting skinnier, right? So as I do a vertical stretch, my graph gets skinnier. Does that make sense? All right, so this, the vertical stretch is, or shrink, whatever, there's some value that sits out front of my function, some number that sits out there, okay? Maybe I have, if I'm talking about a quadratic, maybe it's 2x squared. This 2 is that a that's sitting out front, okay? For vertical, this time, For vertical, the absolute value of A, if it's bigger than 1, that's a vertical stretch. And that makes sense because we said as A gets bigger, my graph gets skinnier when I was in quadratics, right? Are y'all following me or am I talking like... Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so the absolute value of the negative has to do with reflection. It doesn't have to do with stretching and shrinking. So if I look at the absolute value of A, if the absolute value of A is bigger than 1, then it's a vertical stretch, which means Stretching out this way, which means my graph is getting skinny. No. Because what if A, now if I'm talking about absolute value and I'm less than 1, talking about fractions, right? So much small numbers. So if the absolute value of A is less than 1, then that's a shrink. So what would happen if I took those axes, that's right, and I smushed it in. Think about like an Oreo. If you smush it in, what happens to the filling? It all smushes out, right? It gets wider. Um, now, calculating this, I also told you that means this, right? And that's because the vertical stretch could also be described 
as a horizontal tree. So we're going to do the same thing for the graph, okay? We're going to talk about horizontal in just a minute. But stretching it out gets my graph skinnier. Are y'all with me? Stop making faces. All right. What's going on here? It gets wider because it's a what? So for this one, I, whenever I'm describing the transformations, I say that this is a vertical shrink of one half. You have to give the factor that it shrinks by. Yeah. Vertical shrink of one half. Yes. This is dilations. It is a dilation. All right. Now, if you look over in that last column, it gives you the little change, right? It says xy becomes x, the x is not impacted because it's a vertical shrink or stretch, but what does it say to do to the y? Half it, or in the case of your sheet here, your orange sheet, it says multiply every y by a, right? So whatever a is, or whatever y is, I multiply it by that factor there. So let's think about this in terms of a parent graph. My parent graph Zero, zero, one, one, two, wait. Oh. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Right. So if that's my parent graph, in order to implement this stretch, I take every X and leave it alone, but then every Y, I'm going to multiply by my A. Okay? So zero, zero stays zero, zero, right? One, one becomes one, one half because it's one times a half. So one, one half. And negative one, one becomes what? Negative one, one half. Negative one, one half. Oops. Looking at this, it looks green on my screen. They say it looks blue on your screen. Looking at this one, would you agree that that is a vertical shrink? Would you look at that and tell? Yeah. Yes. Vertical shrink smushes it down this way, which makes the edges come out. Does that make sense? Are y'all okay? All right. Slower. All right, let's talk about the horizontal because it's the hardest. Horizontal is always hard. Why is horizontal always hard in everything we do? What happens with all the horizontal transformations we do? It's always what? They're kind of it's opposite, right? If I add, I move left. If I subtract, I move right. Everything's opposite with horizontal. Same thing's going to happen with these shrinks and stretches, okay? Horizontal's left to right. Think about it like this horizontal. That's how I remember. And vertical looks like an arrow pointing down. God. Teachers yeah. need to think analytically. I It depends on the field you go into. 
My husband uses algebra all the time at his job. He's a chemist. He's a chemist. He works in a chemical lab. So he does like quality control and process development. So he helps come up with the processes to run the stuff in the plant, and then he does quality control where he tests the stuff. Yes, that's right. Right. That's what's backwards about the same book does. All right, horizontal. Horizontal looks a little bit different because it multiplies to the x here. Okay. A star just means multiply. I just wanted you to make sure you knew multiply. Is that better? Here's the thing. This has a shrink or stretch factor of 1 over A, which means I have to flip it over. Okay? Now, if A is bigger than 1, it is a shrink. It's the opposite, remember? And if it's smaller than 1, 1 over A, just means flip, then it's a stretch. Okay? And that's what I mean by opposite. So the smaller A gets, but remember, a horizontal shrink is the same thing as a vertical stretch, right? Vertical, it is what it is. Horizontal, it has to flip. Okay? Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's an absolute value this time. Right. Yeah. Because technically I could pull this three out of the absolute value, put it outside, and it'd become a vertical. But we're gonna do it the way it's written right now. All right. The A is yeah. No, the last one was um, quadratic. For your project, for your project, they're all going to be either absolute value, quadratic, or linear. That's it. All right. Flip to the x, yes, of 3. Is that a shrink? Oh, first of all, is it horizontal or vertical? How do you know? It's inside. It's inside with it, right? If it looks like this as opposed to this, this is vertical. This is horizontal. Do you see the difference? Okay. Is it a stretch or a shrink? Why? Three is bigger than one, so it's a shrink. So this is a horizontal shrink of, nope, one third. All right, graphically, what does this look like? What does a horizontal shrink look like? Is the graph skinnier or wider than what it started? Skinnier. Horizontal shrink makes my graph skinny. Yes? Are y'all following with me? You've got to think about those axes being like elastic almost. And if you stretch them and push them in. All right. How am I going to find the points for this? So, this is a little bit different. You take your X and your Y, okay? 
Now on your sheet, it says X over A, Y, right? I like to think about it as 1 over A times X, Y, because that's where I did 1 over A here. So I multiply that by every X. However you like to think about that, doesn't matter. So if I think about my parent, zero, one, one. yes, that's the parent. I'll give you all a second to catch up with me. Some of you are practically writing. No, all right, zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one. Zero, zero becomes zero, zero. And then one, one becomes, that's right, one third one. So over about a third of the way, but up one. And same thing with the negative side, right? Whoop, that's terrible. Does that look like a horizontal? All right, let's put them all together and see what happens. Sometimes it's easier to write them one way or the other. All right, let's talk about multiple transformations. Then I'm going to give you. Mark, I'm going to give you your multiple transfer. Um, yeah, we'll give you your work. I know. I'm going to give you your project. What I meant was I'm going to give you this and like not give it to you. I wasn't giving it to you, but I'm going to. Or you got it yesterday. This is what you got yesterday. Flip over to flip over to the next to the last page. It's like number forty one, I think. Now, as you start doing multiple transformations, you always want to shrink or stretch first because you got to think about order of operations, right? Multiplication, division comes first. So you want to do shrinks or stretches first, then you'll do your slides, okay? So let your slides be the last thing you do. Um, and there's a little blurb about this in there, but you'll do your shrink stretches, then your reflections, and then you'll do your slides, okay? Go with me. I need to write that. Shrink stretches. Reflections. And those two don't matter. You can interchange those if you want to. But then your translations have to come last. Can you what? That's pretty heavy. All right, so all, well, you have to look at what you have. So the first thing I want to do is I want to name my parent function. What's my, what's my parent? That's right. It's on your packet. 
What are you playing? Are you? Oh yeah, he's playing one of those games that you can't block so you can unblock everything else. It's impossible yeah, to block it with the like, you might as well unblock everything else. Y'all ready now? Yeah. Let's go back to white Yeah, do your smart pass. Alright. Zero, zero, one, one. Thank you. Uh, all right, I just started with the parent. You will, you do not have to graph all these different transformations. I just want to, I want you to see the process that happens as we go. All right, so tell me what transformations are happening on this graph. Left four. What else happens? A vertical close stretch. Vertical, it is what it is. Horizontal, it flips. Okay. So, vertical stretch of two. That's the only thing happening, right? As I apply these, which should I do first? The vertical stretch. I'm going to do this first and then I'm going to move it left. Okay. Now, as I do this vertical stretch of two, that means I take each point on this graph and times what by two? Y. The y. So the x will stay the same. I'll multiply every y by two, right? So negative one, one will become negative one, two. Zero, zero, of course, stays zero, zero. And one, one is one, two, right? If you need to write all this to help you, you can. You don't have to do this every time. I'm just really baby stepping it through here for you to kind of so you have a guide here. All right. Here, here, here. The only thing I have done is a vertical stretch, yes? Anybody confused? 41. Oh. Uh, vertical stretch of two. Do we see? Oh, excuse me. All right, now take that graph, take the pink one, and move it left four. Right? So one. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The green or the blue, whatever it looks like on your end. I moved the pink one. Did I move the wrong one? Oh, man, Stacy. Sorry. One, two, three, four. I don't know. You can. You can. But I'm just I, I just wanted you to see. One, two, three. There we go. What's the domain here? What's the range? All right, go backwards a little bit. I feel like the back of this is easier than the front. Um, Bella says 23. 23 is a good one. This is where I think it gets a little harder. I got to go backwards on this. I start with a graph, right? On this graph, I'm at zero, zero. 
I always find the first point where it crosses over exactly. I try to make one of my points be one. I look for a place where either my X is one or my Y is one so that I can really figure out the shrink or stretch that's happening. Right? Like, I know that the parent here is absolute value. You're exactly right. Parent is absolute value. I don't have any, I have no reflections and I have no slides, right? Because I'm still at zero, zero. So the only thing going on here is a stretch or shrink. So I would say, so you could call this a vertical stretch or horizontal shrink. Now, here's what I do. Here's how I decide. I look at this. I want to say, okay, from 1, 1, what is changing? And I find a point that one of these are, are still 1, right? In this case, 1, 5 is what happens. So which variable did I change? The X or the Y? The Y. Since I changed the Y, that tells me it's vertical. And what did I do? The factor here, which means what did I multiply by, which means that's a stretch. So it's a vertical stretch with a factor of five, bigger than one. Okay, and it makes sense if I look at it, shoop, right? But now the question is, how do I write that equation? Y, y equals five. five, because if it's vertical, it is what it is, right? If this had been horizontal, it'd be a fifth. I'd have to flip it. What's the domain? Right? What is the vertex? 